where today the NASCAR Bush Series. Boy, it's been a tough week for the Bush Series drivers and especially for their teams. A rained out Monday race at Rockingham, North Carolina. A drive through miserable weather to get here. Little practice time, no qualifying. And now they're ready to race. The lineup set by points. A lot of fast cars in the middle and the back of the pack. This will be exciting. Starting grid for this race set by points that put Stanton Barrett on the pole in the Jack Rush number 60. Jason Keller outside, Kevin Harvick, Scott Wimmer. Row number two, Mike Bliss from the Truck Series, Brian Vickers. In the Hendrick number five, David Green. The 37 and Shane Meal. Bobby Hamilton Jr., Stacy Compton. The top 10, Rookie of the Year, Scott Riggs, Randy LaJoy. Let you have a look back through the field, through the 43 starters. We have a lot of cars that's going to have to go to the rear of the field. We heard him talking about Jamie McMurray, Mike Walter with a backup car after the wreck last night. But Mike Carmen, Tony Raines, Matt Kenseth, but most notably Jason Keller, who had been on the outside of the front row. All of those cars have to go to the rear of the field because of engine changes. And then the 39 car, which is Clint Boshaw, he has to go to the rear of the field because he missed the driver's meeting. So six cars to the rear of the field. The field set by car owner points using the 2002 standings down through the top 35 positions and then the most recent winning team not yet in the field. That is the chance two team that Dale Earnhardt Jr. drove to victory at Daytona. So Steve Park makes the show. Then the next driver most recent winning driver not yet in the field. That'll be Johnny Sauter. And you'll see them back in these next two rows and then we revert back two points. Eddie McKean didn't race in the Bush Series last year, but they bought the assets of the 91 team, including the number and the owner points that came with it. So it's a topsy-turvy lineup because qualifying got rained out. Right now, they're just, uh, you know, we got, we're on one to go here, and the, the driver's talking to the crew chief, the spotter benchers, radios, everybody's got good communication, and uh, they're telling him to check his gauges. Shake it around a little bit, put a little heat in the tires, down on the air, a little low on the air pressure. Car might not feel real good to you. A couple of laps here, but then it'll come to you. It gets you, you right now, if you're in the middle of the back of the field, you've got to pass them while you got them in your sights. You don't want them to get strung out and get away from you. So everybody's going to be up on the wheel going after it. All right, DW, reach up there and pull those belts good and tight. 200 laps. Here we come. 300 miles. Green pack. Boogity, 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 boys, go! Satan Barrett has never led a lap in a Bush Series, so we'll see if he can hang on here and lead one. I tell you, I talked to his crew, though, and as Scott Wimmer, 23 car, gets a good run, and up in that second groove, they tested here, did nothing but race setups. They left here real happy. He likes what he sees behind him right now, Harvick and Wimmer side by side. Boy, McMurray's passed about a dozen cars already in half a lap, but here come the leaders. Who will lead lap one? Kevin Harvick, he got a good run yeah, in the 21 did. car on the bottom side of turn four. Close set the line, give it to Harvick. Oh, 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 trouble here. Oh, man. Steve Park around off Matt Kenseth. He's going to keep it off the wall, but still cars on coming. No contact. All right. You no know, caution think, yet. Steve. No caution. Oh, 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 there you go. I, I, I think Michael got into the back of him. All right, now the caution is out. Caution is out, so he will stay on the lead lap. Didn't take long. Boy, I tell you, I, I, I believe Michael booted him off before there. Darrell, they were three wide and four wide in the, in the middle and back of that pack. I don't see, yeah, you see the grill on Michael's car. It's all caved in. Michael, what do you say, Tom? I'm sure what that's all about. Here comes Michael. Oh, they just, yeah, he just comes down the hill. He's got to run. Man, surely he wasn't thinking he could bump draft him there. Well, look at those cars there in the outside wall. Just they barely got by. Man, in park, I mean, that's a you got that's a great job of hanging on that thing, keeping it out of the wall. It's almost oh, like know, Steve no, Park had it, to check up did. because of the that's, 19 car. That's what happened, line. Larry. He got he had to slow down because the car in front of him, he cut down behind him, had to back out of the throttle. Michael was coming, run into the back of him. 
This restart's going to happen without Matt Kenseth. He's being held a lap. They said he did not beat the stop sign at the end of pit road. So he's a lap down. Plus, he's at pit road speed while everybody is at got speed. Got except Mike Harmon. Got a car over there on the back straightaway. I don't think he's going to make it to the pits. No, wait a minute. He may turn down that access road and he'll be out of the way. He is on access road, so we should stay green. Matt Kenseth is going to be about three quarters of a lap behind. Because once he left his pit box, he had to maintain that 45 miles an hour. If he sped down pit road, he'd be back on pit road for another penalty. Boy, this is, I tell you though, right now, you just, you set in this race car. Last time you were, it was last night. Felt pretty good to you. You got out there this, today with the sun out and the track's hot. Said, man, what have y'all done to my car? Scott Riggs is coming. That yellow car up the outside. Last year's Rookie of the Year just took a spot from David Green, moved up to seven. And you fight so hard for the bottom here. I mean, that's the short way around, the quick way around. If your car work on the outside, particularly this early going, you can pass a lot of cars just like Jamie McMurray's done. Now here's Park. I wonder if Park knows what happened because there he is right behind Michael. He might not be happy with Michael right now. Well, now, is this a case where the spotters get together up on the roof and have a little discussion, explanation among themselves so each can tell his driver what happened? I would certainly hope so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all that probably they've told him so far is Michael said, well, I didn't mean to do that. Randy LaJoy gives up two spots going into turn number three. And here comes the nine of Jeff Burton. Came out here and tested this car. Uh, this is a one race deal with his Winston Cup sponsorship. And uh, I know they worked most of their two days testing just on race setup. Based on what I saw last night in practice, and that car has really, really been fast. And I think once he works his way to the front, he's going to be the cat to beat. Well, I tell you what, you know, a guy had to start at the rear of the field, gave up that front row starting position. We're riding with him right here. Jason Keller in the 57 car had to go to the rear of the field after changing engines. He's up to 22nd spot. That was a last-minute change this morning. They warmed the car up. Everything was normal. The engine guy decided to look at the Oberg filter, which is a filter you can take apart. All kinds of metal shavings in there. They had to change this motor about two hours after coming in here this morning. He is on the move. Burton moving up to 15th and a change at fifth place. Brian Vickers passing Ron Hornaday. This view from Stacy Compton in 15th position. Steve Burns. Mike with crew chief Kevin Mannion on Steve Park's car. Notice the tires are still on this side of pit wall. Kevin, what is NASCAR telling you? Uh, they're telling us that only two or three of them are flat spotted. We're trying to get a complete set. Uh, obviously, you see from the replay, two, two or three, three sixties, but surely think they were all flat spotted then we just didn't want to risk these uh, life out there so uh, we're just trying to get a full complete set now i mean kevin did exactly what he needed to do you see your car spinning down the front stretch like that it's gonna flat spot them which just means it puts a flat spot on trouble tires. turn two one car goes spinning after contact and down to the track apron caution is out 16 car Larry That's Gunsel. Larry Gunsel. And he had help, Larry. There was a contact with another car that sent Gunselman around. So he's had two tough weeks in a row. Was involved in the Shane Meal Mike Wallace crash. What happened? Tell us what happened. We don't know. We can't tell anything. Yes. I believe. 70 or 71, whoever it was, just thrilled me. I was on the outside of me. Just thrilled me in the, in the driver's door. Cohen is knocked out, but I don't think the car's hurt too bad. The other car was Ron Young, 71. I don't think we'll see anybody come to pit road. We've only run about nine laps of green flag racing. Let's see uh, how it looked from Coy Gibbs' point of view. Oh, yeah. The 71 car got his left front uh, tire down on the apron, and when it come back up on the racetrack, he just bobbled there for a second. 16 was right alongside of him, got into the door. You can see right there when the 16 came off the racetrack, that different transition of degree of banking from the apron to the racetrack. Yeah, he clipped that uh, left front tire down on that apron and shot him back up into the 16. That is the third week in a row Larry Gunzelman's been caught in a bad spot. Under caution for the second time. Green, green. And Hornaday 
steps out to the outside. Going to gain a little ground on Vickers here going to turn one. Scott Riggs and the 10 car goes with him. Because you're doing an awful lot of hand signals, uh, you know, on restarts. And even during the race, I mean, that's the only way you really got to communicate other than talk to the spotters and they relay messages. But lots of hand signals, and you always try to figure out what the guy's trying to tell you. Hornaday's made it up to fifth. Meanwhile, Harvick is trying to just walk away from this field once I mean, again. in three quarters of a lap, he's put that much distance. Those guys came out here and test, though. Uh, did a lot of testing for their Bush program as well as the Winston Cup program. And so many of the teams that came out here and tested, they focused more on their race setup than they did their qualifying setup. Yeah, you seem to be able to manhandle a car pretty good. Tape it up, put tires on. You can get around here pretty fast for one lap. The trick is getting around here for... 300 miles like we got to do today. And what do you got, Matt? But DW, one problem the 21 car had this week was a cooling problem. They finally changed the radiator. And then Butch Hilton, the crew chief for Kevin, asked Kevin, what are the temperatures? Under that caution, he told him 180-210. He said, that's beautiful. Well, there's definitely one way to keep it cool, and that's out there where he's at, in clean air. But not in the middle of this pack. Todd Bodine almost split Vickers and Riggs, and that almost got ugly coming off turn four. Talked to that group this morning, Todd Bodine, the 92 car. They really felt good about their car after practice. The biggest thing they're trying to accomplish is get something on those quarter panels as far as the sponsor. Well, Todd's being held up. He's getting, probably going to get a little impatient here. Those two cars running side by side. He's got a little faster car. He'd like to squeeze through there if he can. That's going to help him right here because he got under the 10 car. Look down in there. Let's see if we can. Holding a pretty wheel today. Looks focused. Got to keep an got to keep an eye on the hands, guys. That's how you know how the cars handle. Scott Riggs side by side just dropped a spot to Todd Bodine. Steve's in his pit. Well, Mike, you guys have been talking about how many teams tested here in Las Vegas and how important this race was. Scott Riggs came here and tested two cars. Crew chief Doug Randolph didn't like either one of them, so the car he's racing today was actually run a year ago by Lyndon Amick for the same race team. But two cars didn't like either one. Yeah, Steve, that's a 2002 car body style. His teammate, Jason Keller, has the 2003 body. Again, unlike Winston Cup in Bush, you have a choice. You can run last year's body style or the new body style. Wow. Uh, I think you could get away with that. Maybe, at, you know, at Daytona, there's probably, they had their speedway cars already built, so they didn't have a problem. Here at Rockingham, like we talk about, tire management. But here, you want all the downforce and grip you can get. I want to come with the latest and greatest piece I had. Look at this, number nine with a bullet. I'm going to tell you, talk about grip. <laughs> he, he is flying through the corners. Fastest in practice. Jeff Burton is flying up through this field, the defending champ of this race. And Joe Nemechek has moved up to 14th place. And the 87 now battles side by side there. And the closer to the front you get, the harder it gets. I mean, you know, these guys are not running up... The guys that are running up running up there for a reason. They got fast cars, so it gets a little bit harder every time you come to somebody. I talked to his crew chief this morning, Brian Patton. He was telling me even though this car has the new body on it, this is the chassis they ran at every mile and a half racetrack last year. Said they really liked the package for this car. Burton underneath Todd Bodine and just slices past to pick up another spot, Dick. Yeah, he is really running, and this morning Burton said the car is wicked fast. That's a quote, even though he's a Southern boy. Use the word wicked fast. He said the car that won here last year in testing was four-tenths slower than this one. This has four different springs, four different shocks. The bar is different, chassis is different, body is different from O2. Brian Vickers bounced off the wall exiting turn four. And that was right as Jeff Burton was going by him on the low side. Yeah, if, if you were... Here earlier when we did the drive around, coming off a of turn four, you just run out of room. I mean, that wall just comes up there, and you, you don't even realize it, and you bounce off of it. Here's another look. It's coming off here, and the car picked up some, a little bit of push before he could get out of the gas. And anything about it, he's bouncing off the wall. It's Jeff Burton up, laying them down. Passed Ron Hornaday for fifth. The only car here that might be faster is Kevin Harvick. Got a big storm cloud coming over. You'll see a few raindrops here. But you know, yesterday, Mike, uh, Larry and I were down on the uh, first and second turn into the speedway. It was raining so hard, we, could, we, we couldn't even, 
we couldn't walk outside the coach. Water was running everywhere. We got on a, in the car, drove down to the compound, which is in the third and fourth turn into the speedway. The sun was shining. And look at the backstretch. No rain in the backstretch. Not until they come back around to the front is, are there uh, a few raindrops. Well, it, it, it can't rain yet because Burton hadn't gotten the lead yet. <laughs> so as soon as he gets the lead, then you could probably expect the bottom to fall out of it. But you know what? That wasn't that many laps ago. We were talking about him being five seconds behind. Now he's only a little over a second behind leader Kevin Harvick. Yeah, when, when Harvick had to race with the Scott Riggs there for several laps to get around him, that allowed Burton to really, really close up. He reeled him in big time. I figured the... Uh, Actually, you know, right now, the 21 Harvick and the 9 of Burton and the 92 of Bodine, those are all three cars that are running about the same speed. Michael Waltrip has climbed to sixth. And he's about a second and a half behind David Green. And that's in a backup car, as we documented earlier today. And uh, he's already had go in the pits one time with some damage, but he's running a good race. And what do all the top six have in common except... For David Green, they're all in the Winston Cup race tomorrow. And they all practiced this morning, and so they kind of knew what they were getting into when they got in these cars. See, Michael's got quite the patch job on the nose of his car when he got into Steve Park there on lap one of the race. Moving past the uh, Orleans Ford, Bechtel, and here's helmet cam on Michael Waltrip. Going to have to get him a little light and put it down there on the steering column so we can see up in there real good. He's got a pretty good handful there, Larry. He's got that thing cranked around to the left pretty hard. But you can tell when he gets back in the throttle, he's back in it wide open. Shows it has a, maybe a little bit, little bit of push. The front tires are sliding just a little bit. And he's about three or four tenths slower than our leader, Kevin Harvick, in second place, Jeff Burton. And I'd say that probably when he comes to pit road, they'll free him up just a little bit, and he'll be faster yet. Well, this racetrack always. Getting in a way. Uh, track bar adjustment will be enough. All right, that's his crew chief, Bobby Kennedy. They're about 10 away from pitting, and what he was asking, evidently they've been talking about what to change on the race car, and I'm going to say, watching his hands, they're probably going to raise the track bar in the rear, which will free that car up, especially on the exit of the corner. He did the same thing last week. He was looking right early in the race. One adjustment on the track bar, and, of course, Michael Ray chased uh, McMurray down, but then, uh, then he had trouble. But I was going to say that track the more rubber gets down the tighter it gets so you just have to continue to make adjustments i guarantee you harvick and jeff burton will probably be making slight adjustments on their car knowing the track's going to change i think this was the first racetrack that i ever told the guys that the car was pushing like a dump truck because that's <laughs> that's the feel you get here you got the wheels cut hard left trying to get back in the throttle and the front wheels will not turn they just skate kevin harvick has led every lap he's 1.3 seconds ahead of jeff burton this time by. Jamie McMurray has climbed into the top 10. He just took ninth from Ron Hornaday after starting in the back with a backup car. But it's all Chevys in the top 10 except for Burton's Ford and David Green's Pontiac. And now the caution is out for rain. Nobody's able to get a lap back. Nobody really close to leader Kevin Harvick. You know, I want to look at Todd Bodine in the 92 here. We were talking about that it may have a crack in the air dam right there. I don't know that that actually is a crack in there. I knew his car was working awfully good to have a crack in the air dam. Nothing there. This is going through the corner. I think it's got a crack there, Larry. It's, 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 oh. something, it's something went up in, against it. Yeah, it's not a crack. It's like it's something actually just... It's like tire rubber or, or something. something. Sometime on these racetracks, if there's a crack in the track, uh, that's a, that, man, it's hard to tell, like a piece of tape. You know what it could be? It could be one of the tear offs off no, of the windshield. It's a, it, it's a piece of side skirt stuck in the grill, stuck in the air dam down there. I got a good look at it then. It's a piece of aluminum, so you get a side view of it. It's like the side skirt off one of the cars and shot back there and stuck in the thing. Well, they'll pull it off on pit stops, which we will expect under caution. Only 62 of 200 laps complete. And getting close to pit stop time. Yeah, and for that reason, you know, you, you really won't have any cars stay out except for the cars that's a lap down because we're not near the halfway. This will definitely be time for fuel, four tires, and adjustments. Steve Burns. 
And Scott Wimmer says that his race car is plowing Mike Joy. Crew chief Chris Rice says they're going to make a major adjustment. Three rounds down on the right rear wedge bolt. Three rounds. We've got a crew cam on Fletcher Lord, the front tire carrier, giving you a great look at what it's like to come around that car. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. On the first half of that run, Steve, Kevin Harvick said his race car was neutral, but on the second half, he said the car was just way too tight above the corner. A wedge adjustment already completed. They made an air pressure adjustment as well. To Nick. Jeff Burton is in. He is going to take four tires, two cans of fuel, and no adjustments. The car just a little bit loose coming off the corner, but that's it. Todd Bodine is going to beat him off, and Daryl, you're right. It's just a little piece of aluminum in the grill. Nothing to worry about with Todd Bodine's car. I'm going to tell you what pit crew stepped up to the plate that time was Joe Nemechek in the 87 car. He's going to go out second behind Kevin Harvick after coming in fourth. Last week, Jamie McMurray led nearly every lap. This week, Kevin Harvick has led every lap so far, all 63 of them. I think he's going to have his hands full now after the, when we get back to race. 67 laps complete. Now we'll have about seven cars on that inside line that are one or more laps down, including Scott Riggs in the 10 car at the front of that line. I know you couldn't really tell that maybe on that restart, but Riggs and uh, Harvick are not the best of buddies right now. And uh, Riggs was right up against Harvick when he dropped the hammer there. But Daryl, in Scott Riggs' defense, he was doing his job. You do everything you can to stay on the lead lap. Yep, doesn't make that leader very happy. Or the car going high. Uh, he saved it. He just sights in. Stuff on his tires. Harvick the leader, and once again, he takes off, this time from Joe Nemechek and the rest of the pack. Man, Burton back there. I mean, he just rocketed around the outside of Michael, like Michael had his, like had his brakes on. Yeah, because Burton went from second to fifth on his pit stop, and he's wasting no time getting back up to second. This little car right here, that payday car, looks pretty good, though, Larry. He's got his work cut out for him to get up here and get after him. Quick pit stop for Kevin Harvick, and this despite a change this week in his over-the-wall crew, Matt. Mike, you're looking at Brian Englehart. He's the normal gas man on Kevin Harvick's Winston Cup number 29 Chevrolet. He's filling in this week for this team. They're racing with sad, sad hearts. Jim Stuber, who normally wears his uniform and fills the spot as gas man on pit road on this Bush team, got off the plane here Tuesday night and received a page that everybody does not want to receive, and that's the fact that his mom passed away. So he got right back on another plane and flew back home to North Carolina. Uh, our well wishes go out to Jim and his family. A very tough week. So Harvick holding a lead of seven-tenths of a second now on Nemechek as the field gathers up. Three cautions so far. The Steve Park spin at lap two. The Ron Young, Larry Gunzelman crash on lap 11 and rain at lap 63. There's a couple of cars a little quicker than Harvick, but he's got track position there out front and kind of easing on off. But uh, there's Steve Park back there still hanging in there pretty well. Yeah, he's up to ninth. Scott Wimmer just ahead, winning a driver in the last leg of the season last year. And a lot of his success came at racetracks just like this, Homestead, Phoenix, those flat, big mile, mile and a half racetracks. Got a little revamp in there, though, when Booty left and went over to the 77 Winston Cup car. Booty Barker is crew chief. And look who's just ahead of him, Darrell. Jamie McMurray has come from last all the way up to seventh. Pretty good old, that's a pretty good old backup car right there. He and Michael both got two good backup cars. Looks like Scott uh, Scott Wimmer's car that we're riding with right here might have been a little quicker through the middle of the corner. There you see Steve Park, though, on the outside in the eight car challenging Scott. This is a battle for eight. That outside line down here, and especially in the three and four coming off the four, is starting to work pretty well for a lot of these guys. Burton passed a couple of cars high coming out of there. And you know, Daryl, you had to, you, we've been coming here six years, and you just knew eventually there was going to be a second groove, and it looks like we finally can have some side-by-side -side racing at this flat racetrack. Well, these guys here are widening it out a little bit today, and then the Winston Cup guys will widen it out a little bit more tomorrow. So, yeah, by uh, tomorrow's race, should be able to run too wide easily. What we're seeing in the early going, unlike Daytona, where you had to take the inside, the short way around to be fast, here, Darrell, looks like if you're going to move up, you're going to have to work that outside. Yeah, and, and, and tracks like this give you a lot of options. You know, if your car's a little tight, you can move up a little higher, and the car will run well up there. Uh, the biggest problem is just getting the groove worked in. A little sand and dirt up there out of the groove, because everybody tries to run around that white line all the time. Jeff Burton shuffled back a bit on pit uh -oh, stop. Oh, trouble, trouble down. Turn two. 
Three cars went into that corner abreast, and again, the victim on the outside is Larry Gutzelman. It's Eddie McKean, the 91, that gets into him. Caution is out. Nobody got a lap back. Really wasn't nobody close to Harvick again. And also involved, we believe, the 38 of Casey Kane. You saw some fire on the right side there of Eddie McKean's car. It was, in, it was like raw fuel and exhaust pipe. The minute he cranked the engine, it burned the, the flames out. Let's see if we can see what happened down here. Now, they went in that corner three wide. And here they go here. Kane on the bottom. Kane gets down on the bottom. Yo. Mm. Kane did not have anything to do with that. 91 went in really hard on the outside there, or kind of in the middle, and he just lost control. Remember the guy in Little Abner, Joe Blitzeflick, the guy, there was no vowels in his name, just consonants, and he always had a cloud over his head. Larry Gunzelman has got to be feeling like that because for the fourth time in three weeks, he's a victim. Well, sometimes, you know, you put yourself in positions where you can be a victim. Darrell, could one of those cars behind McKean have taken air off his spoiler? Or I, I don't see it. Away? I don't see it. He just lost it. He, what he did, the 38 went in down underneath of him. I think he just drove it in there a little bit harder than he maybe had all day long, and it wasn't there for him. It didn't stick, and it came around, and the result was he got into the 16 car. A lot of damage to Eddie McKean's number 91. There's a lot of air moving around, you know, down there in a situation like that. So the cars become a little unstable. If you're already a little out of control or you're not handling all that well, this is what happens. So caution is out for the fourth time today. 75 laps complete in Las Vegas. Everybody's fighting for the bottom, Todd, Michael, and them. Jamie drove it to the outside up in the loose stuff, like he was on dirt. Well, from the start of this race, he's been making those passes on the outside. He had to to get through the first 20 cars in just a couple of laps. It may say yellow on the car, but all that kid sees is green. About this battle for second right there, Jeff Burton in the nine car. He's been working that high groove, that second groove up there, like you see him right there in three and four. He just goes by Joe Nemechek. But you know, going back to that one car, a lot of changes just this weekend. Car chief Johnny Allen, he quit in the middle of the day yesterday. Mark Reno had to go to the top of the, the spotter stand where he normally is. They put Donnie Wingo, which is Jamie's Winston Cup crew chief, on the pit box to make the pit box calls. That thing's fast. He battles Michael Walter. <laughs> well, Michael was battling with Todd. Todd and Michael kind of made maybe a little contact. I couldn't tell. And uh, Jamie said, uh, thought the better of it. So I better follow these two cats. Here comes that to eight car, too. He's flying up in the back of this crowd. Yep. Steve Park has worked his way up to seventh, Steve. Yeah, Mike doing a great job after a spin in the opening lap. Battle back to seventh, as you said. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is one of the owners of this race team. He's sitting on the pit box. On the last caution, Steve Park said, next time I drive this car, I want another hose. I need some more air blowing on me. Junior said, hey, we can't afford that. Drive this car like we did in the cup days of old. That's what makes us tough. Now, Steve Park and the rest of the guys on the team answered, yeah, well, maybe the Speed Channel will do a special on you. One of the great car owners of NASCAR <laughs> racing. Maybe. For the lead, Kevin Harvick has a battle on his hands for the first time today. And it's Jeff Burton, the defending winner of this race. I just don't see any way that uh, Harvick can hold that nine car off of Burton. You know, he's he's the master of this joint. Uh, these kind of racetracks he shines on, and he won here last time we were here. I got to believe that Harvick's got his hands full. He's going to have to show me something. But it's so good to be here at Las Vegas and see two distinct grooves. Look at this three wide down the back stretch. Carrie Earnhardt in the 12 car in the middle. The others rolled out. Randy yeah. Joy. I'm going to take advantage of it in the seven. Yeah. Well, Herbie Sander took his toys and went home on okay. that battle. Gosh. Three wide going into that turn is disastrous. 
Well, I'm saying it's so good to be at Las Vegas and see cars running two distinct grooves. One on the bottom like Kevin Harvick, one up in the second groove like Jeff Burke. Still, though, Harvick's led every lap so far. Right here's where uh, Burton's so fast, right through the center of that corner. Looks like he can pick the car up maybe a little quicker, but they're pretty dead even down the straightaway. But what I'm seeing, Harvick, you have to, coming off the corner, you have to be in the top groove. And Harvick slides up there. I think Burton's quicker, but he just can't get by him. Now, remember, a track like this, gear selection can make all the difference in the world. You run that bottom line down there, you bind the car up a little bit. So you got to have a little bit lower gear. You run, like, the high line, you got to have a little higher gear. You got a Ford and a Chevrolet there. Do two different engine combinations. And the third place car, nowhere in sight. That's Joe Nemechek. He is one full second back. But he's not that far back, Mike. He's, I think he's nibbling. These two cats are racing. Looks to me like he's closing up on them just a tad. Well, we got quite a battle back there for eight with Mike Bliss in the 20 car, Scott Wimmer in 23, and Bobby Hamilton in the 25. And right in the mix as well, Scott Riggs in the 10. Remember, he's a lap down getting lapped about 20 laps ago. These guys been racing, I mean, hard. Bobby Hamilton Jr. in the 25 is not too far behind them. Harvick's trying to stay, he's trying to stay right in Jeff Burton's way. He kind of moves up in the center of the corner now down there to block any uh, move that Burton might try to make on him through the center of turns three and four. They look pretty even down here in one and two. The record for leading the most laps in this race, 150 set by Mark Martin four years ago. You know, Darrell, when I look at Steve Park in that eight car, and he's up there at a six, and he has one of the quickest cars. You know what's happening right here? I don't know about air hoses blowing to him. Confidence builder. Struggling in that Winston Cup car. He's proven to himself, I know I still have it. I can still do it. Yeah, it's, it's always good to see somebody like Steve. I mean, if you had to pick somebody out there right now that you say, I'd really like to see him win a race, it'd be Steve Park. It would. Finished eighth in his only previous push start at this racetrack that was back in 1997 and i just think it's cool that dale jr you know they put this deal together and he's gonna let park drive the car a couple other people drive the car that's really cool that he wants to share the wealth if you will sure all right joe nemechek stuck kind of stuck right there at one second behind the two leaders Jenny. Yeah. Mike, though, he's keeping an eye on good things to come. He says the longer I drive this car, the better it gets, and it is starting to free up for him. And he wanted everyone to keep in mind this is his favorite car. He got a third place in Atlanta and Chicago in this car, and he was a leading at Kentucky when it started to rain. So they're still very confident here in the 87 pit. Just sticking with the leaders, that's the plan. Jeff Burton with a run up on the outside, and Harvick doesn't leave him a lot of outside. No, but he's got the momentum. He's got the big move. Harvick tried to block him. That's where uh, Jeff is so good. In the middle of three and four and up off of four, he's got just a little bit more zip up off that corner. And the car sticks up there in that second groove. He should get a good run off turn two here and win the drag race down the back stretch. We saw he and his brother here a couple, three years ago running side by side, Jeff and Ward, and uh, very similar. Jeff up high, Ward down low. Had a whale of a race. Well, Harvick's not giving up this lead. Oh, no. <laughs> Harvick does not have. He don't know the word give up. But I tell you why these guys are doing this side-by-side -side racing. Her Genie Zelasco talk about Joe Nemechek. He is slowly but surely coming into the picture with these guys. And right now, Harvick's got to prove a point. You pass me, but you can't get away from me. Because if, Har if, if Jeff ever starts to drive off from him, then it's all over. Now, Bobby Hamilton brushed the wall a moment ago. And again, Daryl, same spot coming up off turn four. Let's look at it. I can't tell you how. You just run out of room here. You just not enough room there. The track just stops. That was close. And you just, you're carrying so much speed. You picked the throttle up well before the center three and four, and you're carrying so much speed, and the racetrack just goes away from you. you. You're turning, 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 and all of a sudden there's nowhere else to turn, and you hit the wall. 91 laps complete. Look at Hamilton up the right of your screen. Just a little brush with the wall. He brushed it. There's the running order <laughs> at 107 laps. See those big rain clouds? They're going to get all the jackalopes wet, but they're going to miss us. <laughs> you know, sure the, they are. Look, you yeah. know the, the, the vortex theory. I mean, we could get those. That's right. Jets over there. The, go up in the clouds and ride around real. You know, circle around here and keep the clouds away. And folks, if you have a drought this summer, just call us. We'll bring NASCAR to your town. Yeah. And it'll rain all weekend. 
Well, I know we're just past halfway, and DW, you don't want me to start talking to you about strategy and fuel mileage, but you know what? This race is getting that green flag look to it. So, Jeff Hammond, I've been doing a little calculating up here. We were on pit road at lap 61. That's 139 laps to go. Tires don't really give up here, so we at least break that down to where we can do it on one more stop. We pit about lap 131. Most of these teams, Bill, go the distance at 70 laps one run, 69 another. And Larry, one other thing, it may come out and be real, real interesting when you look at some of these bushwhackers up toward the front, who's got the better pit crew? Because this could be very important as far as how much time is lost on pit road. Because I believe you need to come in, get those four tires, pack it full of fuel, and go re get ready to go the distance, but getting on and off pit road. And I think you brought it out early on about how important it was to get off the pit road, I mean, on the pit road, off this racetrack. Very difficult. So, again, it could be a big advantage for these Winston Cup guys who know how to get on and off pit roads. Yeah, I mean, Darryl, other than maybe Darlington or Dover, this is probably one of the toughest pit roads to get into. There you see the entrance is right in the middle of turn four, and it's like a 90-degree turn. By the time you get there, you've got to be 45 miles an hour, but you don't want to give up a bunch of time back there getting the pit road. That area can be exciting under green flag stops. Well, particularly if you're trying to make up time. If you're trying to make up time and you get a good end lap, as we say, uh, that can really help you as far as when you come back out on the racetrack, your track position, and that's what we're fighting right now. Daryl, as a driver, when would you like for your crew chief, let's say you and I are working together, you'd like me to tell you what, four to five laps early that we're going to be making this pit stop and kind of count you down so mentally you can be getting ready to do all these things, right? Yeah, well, what you do is you tell the driver we're going to pitch in five laps. That way you can start, start looking for a hole to get into so nobody runs into you from behind or looking for the lead like Kevin Harvick's doing right now. I told, I told you he doesn't no give up. He will he will pursue you. A lap ago, Joe Aramendia looked like he brushed the wall at turn two, but he continues without incident. But what Jeff's talking about is you gotta let, the, you can't just tell, call the driver as he's going down the back straightaway and say, pit now, because you're not in a position. You'll get run over from behind. So you gotta kind of find a place where you can get in a little zone so you can get down on pit road without getting run over, because that's difficult too. So Kevin Harvick moves to the back bumper of Jeff Burton. Joe Nemechek now two seconds back. He's looking. I think Jeff's car looks like he's gotten a little tight, Larry. He's starting to slide the nose up off the corner a little bit. Can't pinch it down. Can't turn down to the bottom of that exit of that corner. There he goes. Fifth caution flag of the day. They'll be making a claim for this one. The number 49 of Chris Bingham. Pretty well torn up. As a result, uh, there's Chris. He's okay, the Bellevue, Washington driver who made his debut at Rockingham. He's okay. Contact with Bobby Hamilton, Jr. And Bingham's into the wall. He's the black car. You know, this could be another one of those situations where Bingham was going to get out of his way, possibly start to move down, and uh, didn't realize Bobby was there. Running those speeds, it don't take much to get you out of shape. Bobby's quite a, quite a bit faster than Bingham was coming up on him. Oh, what's wrong with Jeff Burton? Everything. And this happened under caution. Burton climbing out. Trying to get everything unhooked. The onboard extinguishers apparently put the flames out. But Boy. Jeff Burton's chances of winning have just gone up in flames. A lot of smoke in there. And the car burning again from the rear. Huh. Good grief. Meanwhile, pit stops. Steve Burns. Steve Park is in. They're going to go down two rounds on the right rear. The front just a little bit tight. Four tires for Steve Park. Let's go to Judy Zelasco. Joe Nemetek's crew chief, Eric Phillips, says these tires are just about done. Get in here. They do get four tires. Tire pressure adjustment to the right side. Matt? A big debate whether to go two or four in the Harvick pit due to rain is in the area. They decided to go in for four to get a full load of fuel to Nick. Todd Bodine changing four tires on his automobile. They're going to try to loosen it up a little bit. And just before that fire, Jeff Burton had been on the radio talking with his crew chief, Paul Andrews. They knew there was something wrong with the car but they didn't know what. They thought possibly it was a tire going down. They had had discussion here for the last six or eight laps. The crew had been on the wall. Apparently, whatever it was, instigated the fire. Wow. Casey's, uh, Stacy Compton stayed on the racetrack. He's the leader. Michael Waltrip, Todd Bodine, 
and Kevin Harvick. The well, first one's off pit road. And that's not a bad move for Stacy Compton. They were 17th, and there you see Jeff Burton. You know, you know why he's smiling? Because he's he, out of there? No, that, plus he finally run well. I mean, the guy's been struggling quite a bit, and just to get out there and be able to lead and have a good race car has got to make him feel good. Kind of like we talked about Steve Park, confidence. I can still drive a race car. Right. What I was going to say about Stacy Compton, there's only 22 cars on the lead lap, 23 cars. You're 17th. What do you really give up by staying out, especially with rain close by? Now, let's see what happened. Can we see what happened to Jeff right, Burton? You're riding, riding along around. under caution, and they're not at speed. They haven't made the pit stop yet. Nothing out of the ordinary here. It's just another day, just another sunny day. Going down the back stretch, getting ready to come to pit road. All of a sudden, fire from under the hood. Something erupted underneath there. Like an oil, like gas a line, line oil a gas line, line, oil line, or some, some line had to, uh, to break for that thing just to erupt under, uh, under the hood the way it did. Well, lucky for Burton, if that was going to happen, it happened under caution and not at 180 miles an hour. As the pace car is coming in, there's the pit summary and how things have changed after stops. And the biggest, nastiest, blackest, rainiest cloud of the whole day is now right overhead. Now we're going to document Michael Waltrip in the 99, Todd Bodine in the 92, the way they got that track position with the rain, they elected to change two right side tires only, but that's 50 laps on those left side tires. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you, Larry, they don't have to run long because there's, I, I can't imagine this rain down here in turn one isn't going to be over the racetrack very shortly. The big, the, big, the big challenge is going to be for that 21 car to get by those two cars and be in the lead when it rains. And, Darrell, you know, normally changing just right side tires here has been a good deal, but I think with these aggressive setups, a lot of crew chiefs concerned the left side tires are almost working as much as the right side tires. Three wide in turn two. Well, everybody, wow. they just drove off down into turn one. They saw that cloud. They said it's got to go. Showtime. But, but I tell you, even side-by-side -side racing, you see Kevin Harvick right behind him. He's getting smaller and smaller. He's losing ground to these guys, and that's with them up there racing like they are. Looks like they could, you know, uh, Michael can run that high line down here in three and four, and uh, Todd can run low, and Kevin just don't seem to be able to have the speed that he had earlier. Here comes Bodine back for the lead and takes it. This has shades of that Kentucky race where Biffle and Todd came across the line banging on each other. And Waltrip goes back to the lead. Michael just got so much speed on the outside going down in the corner. He can stay in the throttle a little bit longer. Todd gets him up off. Yellow is out. Uh-oh, they got a yellow and they're racing back. This is, it's, it is for a sprinkle right now. This could be, you've got to race it like you're coming to the checkered flag right here. Inside, inside. Bodine is good on the bottom. Waltrip's been good up top. Here they come. Bodine coming hard. Bodine. That bottom was the way to go to get to the line. It's the shortest, the shortest distance coming to the start finish line. I'd say that's pretty much. Again, we're just at lap 136, but this is a caution for rain. And I'm looking off turn two. I see rain. I look off the back stretch. I see rain. Could be the race for right there. I see a little fire there for a lap or two, though. <laughs> say, a lap or two, a lap or 20. Yeah, they were. They went up. side by side. Man, we didn't need this. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Today's race, the Samstown 300 for the NASCAR Bush Series. An interesting strategy for Ron Hornaday. He last took tires and fuel on lap 118. His crew chief, Ricky Viers, has decided they are going to go all the way. They're going to try to make it on fuel. Part of the reason is it's taking a long time for the car to get used to fresh tires. 20 laps or more. And with just 50 to go here, they're rolling the dice. Maybe they're going to make it. Well, and the good thing, Dick, is that, you know, even though they have a few laps on those tires, those tires have had a chance to keep cool completely down as we was at the red flag almost an hour. So those tires, yeah, they won't be like perfectly new tires, but they're going to be cool tires anyhow. And, and I was really quite impressed. Uh, you know, Michael took two on that last uh, stop before the rain, and he was able to hold off uh, Todd Bodine and Kevin Harvick, who took four. So that was pretty impressive. 
Now, we talked about Steve Park, who's in fourth, who came to pit road and took fuel only. We know he can go the distance. Now, Joe Nemechek in the 87 car, who's in fifth, he did the same thing. No tires, fuel only. So, actually, the first car that took any tires is Michael Waltrip in the 99. He's in sixth. He took left side tires. Watch the yellow car. Scott Riggs on this restart. He wants back on the lead lap. He says his car's good. You know, they've adjusted it up. He says pretty good. So he'll be trying real hard, and I'm sure everybody will be a little apprehensive when they get down here to turn one. I know I would be. And he's with the restart king on the outside, Ron Hornaday. And here he goes. McMurray didn't get going. No, he just really didn't. That could be a product of just the uh, car not coming up to speed because of been sitting around and loaded up a little bit, all that idling around. Looks like he's going okay now, but boy, he lost a ton of ground. Yeah, no momentum as he went down into turn one. Riggs racing to get his lap back. You heard him say he got that car a lot better. Him and Ron Hornaday side by side. Scott Riggs would like to get ahead of him and then catch that caution be back on the lead lap. Riggs makes it through, and McMurray is still not up to speed. Something's wrong. I think he may have a soft tire, Mike. I think that may be his problem. Dick Bergman. Well, they think it's a water problem in the ignition system, Mike. Apparently, the engine's going on and off, and maybe it's in a switch somewhere, oh. possibly the kill switch. I'll show you what happened to him on the restart. There he is outside second row. Well, whatever it is, it's uh, definitely taking him to the rear of the field after restarting in second place. Barrett doing a nice job of getting around him when McMurray had trouble. Well, we got a battle for the lead here, though, with Joe Nemechek in 87 car. Remember, he's had one of the best cars all day long. And Steve Park in the eight car, he's going to fall him through the bottom. They're going to kick Hornaday back to second. Yeah. Oh, top Hold on. nine. Our leader, 92 car. He's going to save it. Easy, easy, easy. easy. No easy. caution yet. He's in that wet grass right now. He's having a tough time to get out. He's going to make it out, and we're going to stay green. Leaders half a second apart, one lap to go. Third place, side by side off turn number four. Bliss underneath Park. They get the white flag. And Keller's starting to pull away from Michael Waltrip and David Green in the 37 here. But this is still a battle for a sixth. Back straight away for Nemechek, final time. He's had three top threes here, looking for his first Vegas win. Joe Nemechek off turn four for his 13th NASCAR Bush Series victory. He beats Kevin Harvick by four tenths of a second. Battle. Watch this. Third place. Bliss, now here comes another one. Give it to Mike Bliss and David Green. Best, Michael Waltrip and Stanton Barrett. And the Hornaday gets back tonight. Scott Wimmer, 10th. Casey Kane, 11. Good runs for all these young guys. Yes, sir. And his first win. Steve Burns. And Joe Nemechek, you told us during the rain delay that you could get to the front. Tell us how you did it. Uh, I had a great, a great restart. Uh, Got to thank all the folks from Cellular One, Nortel Networks, Dobson. Uh, just some great people. Fluid on radiators, precision gear. Wagner Automotive, killer motor in this car. Uh, uh, you know, the cellular one Chevy, awesome all day long. Uh, great pit stops. These guys, these guys were working really hard in the pits. They've been working just specifically for good pit stops. But, uh, I think the key was that last restart. And I was able to get through the lap traffic and got to the front. Uh, the car was really awesome. Brian Patty, Eric Phelps made a good call. We came in, we didn't get any tires, we just got gas. And uh, the thing was perfect. Perfect. And NASCAR returns with round four next week from Darlington in Carolina. But now we go airborne with the stars of Supercross and the FIM Grand Prix Series from the Georgia.